a sick kids hospital initiative is harnessing artificial intelligence to deliver data-driven personalized pediatric health care. Joining us this morning to tell us about this incredible program is Dr. Melissa McCradden, bioethicist, associate scientist at SickKids, and Fatima Zaidi, co-chair of hashtag Tech for Sick Kids Council. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. McCradden, I want to start with you. Explain what, well, we've all heard of AI a lot recently in the news for a lot of reasons. What is ethical AI and how does this help families? Yeah, so ethical AI really is about three important factors. One is good evidence. We need to make sure that we're collecting the right information about how an artificial intelligence system works. The second is good implementation, so making sure that we get input from patients and families about how we should implement artificial intelligence. And the third is good use, so thinking about how we use it in a way that parents and families still participate in shared decision making. So how can this be, I am as layman as you can get, <laughs> and I'm not afraid to say it. So I'm sure a lot of people at home are thinking the same thing. How is this useful considering how much discussion there is currently going on uh, online? Yeah, absolutely. So artificial intelligence really is about patterns. It's about looking at predictable patterns between information and maybe something you want to predict, like a diagnosis or a condition. And so we use patterns in medicine all the time. We also know that patients don't always fit patterns. And so it's always important to take what we know about those patterns and contextualize them to the specific individual in front of us. And we can do that in a number of different ways in healthcare. We might be looking at images like x-rays, CTs, or MRIs. We might also be looking at information that comes from a patient who's in an environment like the intensive care unit, where we're monitoring how they're doing over time. So we can really use it in different ways to use those patterns to help clinicians make better decisions for patients. Wow. Uh, Fatima, next question to you. What, what is Tech for Sick Kids fundraising goal? And what projects are you specifically fundraising for? So we're a group of technology leaders in Canada. We're really passionate about tech and how it can really change lives in a tangible way. And we are on a mission to raise $25 million from now until the end of 2023 to support innovation at Tech for Sick Kids and the foundation. How far away are we, and this is for both of you, yes. from having this technology be readily available? Like, how, where are we in the process? I would say um, we have a ways to go, not only from a funding perspective, but I think it's just like the, the work is lifelong and it's so that we can be a little bit more proactive with pediatric health rather than reactive. Uh, also, I would say that one of the priority projects for this year is to reimagine a new sick kids campus, which includes new diagnostics, therapies, cures, and a new emergency wing of the hospital. Uh, it's often our first touch point with children and parents visiting the hospital, and so we've really decided to prioritize it this year. So how can the community help? Because that's a lot, 25 million, <laughs> I'm no economist, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Yes. Uh, how, how can people get involved and join the cause here? Sick Kids is entirely funded by public support and government funding, so thanks to our supporters who visit the hospital and then come back and donate. Um, we are currently the number one children's hospital in the world. In 2021, we replaced Boston's Children's Hospital for first place. And so I always say we are really lucky to have such a world-class hospital in our backyard. And if we want to think of it as, um, we have to think of it as a community project to keep it at the standards that it's at today. Lots of ways people can get involved. You can uh, encourage your organizations to fundraise on behalf of Sick Kids Foundation and Tech for Sick Kids. You can uh, become a one-time or a monthly donor. Owner. It's oftentimes the micro donations that really come a long way, the $1, the $5, the $10. Um, we also have lots of corporate and uh, employee programs where you can get involved with volunteer opportunities at Sick Kids Foundation as well. So the, the opportunities are plentiful. Um, Dr. McCradden, final question to you. I'm just, I'm just curious because I know when it comes to science, you know, usually emotion is kept out of it because it's, it's, you think of it in a certain way. But when you see what this technology could possibly do and what it could mean, what goes through your head? Yeah, so I always think about what are the core values in healthcare? Autonomy, people being able to make their own decisions, um, parent and child family-centered care is also really important. So when we're talking about a healthcare context, we're also talking about artificial intelligence systems that do really specific things. They're not the kind of do-it-all sort of system that we sometimes worry about. They're doing really specific things. And so we couple that with good training of the clinicians. 
uh, with bringing information to patients and families in an accessible way, um, in a way that respects fairness and their cultural context. And so when we bring that together, those are the kinds of things that help to have good evidence, to have good safety, and to promote good use. Medicine's not one-stop shopping. No, not That's at for all. sure. <laughs> uh, to both of you, it's a pleasure to, to have you in this morning. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Uh, for those who are as fascinated about this as I am, techforkids.com is where you can go. Techforkids.com. They need a lot of help. I know a lot of you out there are in fortune positions that can help. Please do.